up a mess alert before I'm out? Did you? Yes? If you picked up a missile alert, they're in the back as you come in the front door. And if you pick one up, you take it home with you, bring it back, take it home, bring it, don't leave it here. You can't, you can't leave it here. If you leave it in the pew, we're going to throw it away. So if you have a missile alert, and Bonnie says it's the entrance antiphon, we all say it together, <laughs> right? Bonnie did a very nice uh, soliloquy there. <laughs> it's for everybody. It's because we don't have music for the time being, so you say the entrance antiphon. The next one will be the communion antiphon before you go to communion. Well, before that part of the, of the Mass. Because communion is at the end after the uh, final blessing, and you receive communion and then leave. Um, we cannot pass the uh, basket, so I have put a basket up here if you want. There's also a black box at the uh, front entrance of the church. You can leave your donations in there. There's something else, and I can't remember what it was. So it's just good to see all of you, I think. I can't see all of you because you all got masks on, but uh, it's nice to have people back in church again and uh, coming together as a community to worship God and thank him for all our good health. Today we do have the RCIA uh, students, uh, students, are they students? who are receiving their sacraments that they should have received at Easter, but we couldn't do it at Easter, so we're doing it today. So Mass might be a little bit longer. You, you okay with that? Yes, Father. Who said no? Get out. <laughs> it's always a smart guy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how, for 40 years now, the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord.
The response is, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth, swiftly runs his word. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statues and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Hallelujah. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the bread, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen. Amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is, is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. This Feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Jesus, is very significant. It, it's central to our faith. The Eucharist is the source and summit of our faith. And it means very much to me, because if it wasn't for the Eucharist, I wouldn't be here standing in front of you. Some of you may know that uh, when I was young, I was a happy-go-lucky Presbyterian but I got to an age where I thought, maybe there's something more I've got to look for. The, the Presbyterians are very nice people. We had a lovely uh, faith community and a wonderful uh, preacher. But I just went, wanted something more. And, and so the Lutheran church was across the street. I tried them. My Boy Scout troop met at the Methodist church, so I, I tried them. And finally, some friends around the corner uh, from where we lived, uh, invited me to go to church with them, and they took me to St. Mary Magdalene. And the minute I walked into that church, the, the priest was offering Mass in Latin in those days, 
But I just, I knew I was home. I knew I had found what I was looking for. And so I joined. And uh, later, as I, be I, be I became an altar boy at the Immaculata, that was our, our home parish at the time. A and I would serve Mass whenever a priest wanted to say Mass. I, I, I hung around waiting. If you've been to the Immaculata, you see a lot of side chapels. In those days, because there were supposed to be a lot of priests on, uh, on campus, uh, they couldn't, we didn't believe in concelebrating at the time, so they would say their private mass in these private chapels. And if they wanted to say mass, I'd be right there, ready to serve. I just wanted to, to be near the action. Even when I was in seminary, I got stuck up in the choir loft all the time when I really wanted to be on, cer on ceremonies, on the altar. Anyway. It's because of the Eucharist that I became a Catholic. It's because of the Eucharist I became a priest. And, and as most of us will say, we feel most like priests by offering the Eucharist. I read once that uh, Sir Alec Guinness, do you, do you remember Alec Guinness? Very fine English actor, very dry sense of humor. He's also a convert to Catholicism. He was. But uh, he, he remarks that one day he was coming back from church and he ran into a friend who was also a Catholic, although he wasn't practicing his faith. And the man asked uh, Sir Alec, uh, well, did you have a nice mass today? And Sir Alec said he, he hesitated and he wanted to give this reply, but didn't. He, he wanted to tell the man, oh, you know, same old thing, uh, real presence on the altar, Jesus Christ in the fullness, body, blood, soul, and divinity, as usual. But he was too kind to say that kind of thing. And, and, but what, what he wrote down for us uh, points out two very important points. First, Jesus Christ in the Eucharist is really, truly present body, blood, soul, and divinity. And the second one, in contrast, uh, reminds us that we are so used to the Eucharist, we tend to take it for granted. It's just that incredible uh, presence, as usual. I if the gospel reaches uh, its, its uh, point today, it, it will shock us into a deeper appreciation for what Jesus has done for us. He, he speaks of, his, uh, of the Eucharist in very clear, uh, direct, unambiguous language. The bread I am giving is my flesh for the life of the world. Jesus is present in the, in the Eucharist but he's, it's not a passive presence. He is dynamically present, actively present. He is offering himself again as a sacrifice for the salvation of the world. And he comes to us in the form of bread and wine as our spiritual food and drink. My flesh is true food. My, my blood is true drink. And when we share in this incredible sacrament, we, we, sh we, we receive life from him who receives life from the Father. And that life is eternal. And then St. Paul goes on to say there is even more. The primary purpose of the Eucharist is unity of God's people in love. Not just with Jesus, but with each other. And he even says that one is not possible without the other. And he uses the, the analogy of the loaf of bread. In, in those days, they would actually use a loaf of bread. And I always think of the Portuguese sweet bread, that lovely rounded loaf. And then they would, they would pick it apart and share it for communion. And so as Paul says, as we share the one loaf, we are one body. And the truth is that the, the Eucharist makes the church. The, the body of Christ that we receive in communion helps build 
up the mystical body of Christ, the church. Now, we're living in a very strange age where science now is king and, and faith is diminished and even belittled and people don't buy into the mysterious or the miraculous. That doesn't mean the mysterious and miraculous don't exist. In fact, they're still here and they're still very real. Just because God can't fit into a test tube doesn't mean that God doesn't exist. And he is performing miracles every day. Every time we come into this sacred place, God per performs a miracle for us. A miracle of sending his only begotten son to, to be shared with you. This sinful human being is an instrument, a, 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 a pathway for Jesus to come among his people so that I can give communion to you sinful people. God loves us, and he performs this miracle because he wants to be with us, and he wants us to be with him. We are called, as St. Paul again says, we are called to be ambassadors for Christ. We are called to, to proclaim the good news to our brothers and sisters. But how can we do that? We are weak. We are easily distracted. We are sinners. And we can't do it without God's presence, without God's Holy Spirit, and without the nourishment and, and strength we receive from our communion with the Lord. We can do the work that God has given us with his help. And we do it not as individuals, but as the body of Christ. Assembly may be seated. Will our elect please stand and remain at your pew as your name is called? Alicia Began, Robert Thrushell, Julie Thrushell, Min Wong. Where are you? Oh, there you are. My dear friends, let us pray to Almighty God for these elect who are asking for baptism. God has called them and brought them to this moment. May he grant them light and strength to follow Christ with a resolute heart and to profess the faith of the church. May God give them the new life of the Holy Spirit whom we are about to call down on this water. Father, you give us grace through sacramental signs which tell us of the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, we use your gift of water, which you have made a rich symbol of the grace you give us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your spirit breathed on the waters, making them the wellspring of all holiness. The waters of the great flood, you made a sign of the waters of baptism that make an end of sin and a new beginning of goodness. Through the waters of the Red Sea, you led Israel out of slavery to be an image of God's holy people set free from sin by baptism. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. Your son willed that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. After his resurrection, he told his disciples, Go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Father, look now with love upon your church and unseal for her the fountain of baptism. By the, water, by the power of the Holy Spirit, give to the water give to this water the grace of your Son, so that in the sacrament of baptism all those whom you have created in your likeness may be cleansed from sin and rise to a new birth of innocence by water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Alicia, Robert, Julie, Min, Please come to the center aisle. Please stand. And we can all answer these questions with I do.
Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? Amen. I do. The assembly may be seated. Elect, are you ready to come to the water? Okay. Who wants to be first? Robert? Please come over here. Come, come on this side. Bend over. Robert James, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have much to be said, too much hair. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Just step back a little. Over there. Your middle name? Annette. Julie, Ju Julie Annette, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sorry about the hair. <laughs> Alicia. Alicia Louise, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Min. I hesitate to ask, what's your middle name? N-N-N? Uh, yeah. No middle name? In Luke, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Receive the light of Christ. Receive the light of Christ. I could just give you one. You'll be shared. And just keep going. <laughs> My dear elect, this, this light is entrusted to you to, forget, to be kept burning brightly. You have been enlightened by Christ. You are to walk always as children of the light. May you keep the flame of faith alive in your heart. And when the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Will our candidate for full communion with the Catholic Church and her sponsor please come to the center aisle? 
Jenny Mandarin. Jenny, of your own free will, you have asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you in the presence of this community to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of our Lord Jesus, the sign of the Church's unity. Do you believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God? The Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith you have professed in the presence of his family. Normally I would hug you, but I can't. <laughs> would you, one of the, okay, congratulations. Newly baptized, please come forward with your sponsors and join the candidates for confirmation. Sponsors, please. My dear candidates for confirmation, by your baptism you have been born again in Christ and you have become members of Christ and his, of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. My dear friends, let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on these candidates for confirmation to strengthen them with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Robert, be sealed with the, Holy, the gift of the Holy Spirit. all I've got. <laughs> Will you please welcome our new brothers and sisters? <laughs> we'll be sending you envelopes in the next week. <laughs> please, congratulations. You, can be, you may be seated. Please stand now for the prayer of the faithful. Father, we thank you for the many gifts you have given us. We know that you are present in our lives, and so we have the confidence to raise these needs of ours and the whole world to your hands. For those reborn through the waters of baptism, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and received into full communion with the Catholic Church this weekend, Alicia Began, 
Julie Dressler, Robert Dressler, Jenny Mondarin, and Min Bong. That their hearts may remain filled with the fire of your love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For graduates of schools and colleges, that they may invest the skills and blessings they have received for the greater glory of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have lost their source of income or are experiencing difficulty entering the job market, that they may be guided to meaningful work, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation and her people, that we may be united in protecting the life and rights of all, regardless of ethnic background, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homebound, the quarantined, the hospitalized, and all burdened by illness, that your healing presence and our own deep love for them may dispel any sense of isolation and fill them with abundant hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Bernice Hollerbach, that they may now fully share their joy seated at the banquet you have prepared for them in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Maria Nunes, Fernanda Silvera, and Georgina Govea, in whose memory this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for always hearing us, and we ask that you strengthen our faith, that we, that we may revere your many miracles and mysteries in our lives. Help us and give us the courage we need to proclaim the joy we find in our faith. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sin. Now, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose, si whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, 
He offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the 
Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always. Yes, Show one another now a sign of that peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. seated briefly. The Rosary and Memorial Mass for Bernice Hollaback will be celebrated on Saturday, June 20th, beginning at 10.30 in the morning. Father's Day is next Sunday, June 21st. Father's Day Mass cards are available at the front entrance to the church. And uh, I, I would like to emphasize again that uh, the obligation for Sunday Mass is dispensed for the time being. So if you or someone you know would like to come to Mass during the week to give thanks to God for the many gifts that he has given us, you are free to do so. Uh, also, for those uh, 80 and above or those who are homebound, we are the live streaming uh, we did it for the hall, but we haven't needed the hall as yet. But uh, you can still pick it up at home. Uh, you can search YouTube for St. Agnes Point Loma, California org, or you can go to uh, www.stagnes.org, the, the parish website, and uh, you can watch Mass at home. Now, I'm not saying that for you because evidently you can come here. So you do not have the excuse to stay home and watch Mass on TV. That's for sick people and old people. So uh, I hope that uh, you have enjoyed this. Uh, we, we have to get used to this new way temporarily. I'm always saying temporarily for the time being. Please, God, uh, may this pass quickly. Let's stand in prayer.
Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My friends, this Mass is now ended. Let us leave in peace to love the Lord as we serve him. And I would ask our elect, those newly baptized and received into the church and confirmed in the Holy Spirit, to come forward for communion first.